Welcome back to the Capital 10X interview series. We've continued to highlight copper as the electrification metal and key to industrialization and the energy transition. One of the unique companies we've been highlighting recently is Amerigo Resources. They mine copper without a copper mine, enabling the company to profit from resource extraction without the inherent risks. They recently reported fourth quarter earnings and released guidance for 2023. And we're very fortunate enough to have the CEO, Aurora Davidson, joining us to talk about the year ahead. Aurora, could you give us a quick summary of your fourth quarter and the full year 2022? What were you most proud of and what will be your focus in 2023? We just released our results for 2022 on Q4 last week. So 2022 was a great year for Amerigo, both in terms of operational and financial results. Uh, in the year, our annual EBITDA was 48.7 million. And we generated $34.9 million of operating cash flow. Uh, importantly for us, we returned $28 million to our shareholders and we continue to pay down debt. Uh, right now, our debt is at the lowest level since Q1 of 2015. We have $24.5 million of debt and our ending cash position for 2022 was $42 million. You asked about Q4. And I think it's important to note uh, that in Q4, we had uh, a rebound in copper prices. They moved, at, they moved up 30 cents per pound in the quarter to $3.80. And under those conditions, uh, we generated a very strong uh, results in the fourth quarter. Cash from operations was $15.6 million. EBITDA was $14.1 million. And free cash flow to equity was $9.2 million. You exceeded production guidance for the third year in a row. What would you say were the key decisions you made that allowed you to put out such reliable production results? We have a, a very experienced and committed operations team in Chile. There are three aspects that we have been focusing on for the last three years. Uh, one of them is planning. Uh, you can never over-invest over -invest or overspend your time in planning assessing what could happen and what could go wrong. So we spent a lot of time planning. Then another aspect is uh, sheer metallurgical skill. Uh, metallurgy, uh, they tell me, because I'm not a metallurgy, it, a metallurgist is as much an art as a science. And so we have a, a team that knows very well the operational conditions of the plant, and they can do very swift decisions uh, in response to changing conditions, uh, changes in throughput, changes in, in, in grade, et cetera. So that has been working out really well. And the third aspect uh, is essentially ensuring that we have plant availability and that we have no obstacles occurring that could hinder operational continuity. In that sense, uh, let me just give you some, some data. In 2022, our plant availability for the year was on average 98.8%. We didn't have any environmental incidents. We had no unplanned plant stoppages, and we had a stellar safety record. So all of those aspects put together enable us to, uh, to meet our production goals. Is it fair to say that you have a conservative way you approach your business? We've seen you order equipment that you may not need today, but to avoid downtime issues from breakdowns and other obstacles, you'll pick it up ahead of time. Is that correct? It is correct. That is correct. But that is the only way you can manage a business, right? In my opinion, there, they, uh, anything that you don't do that way uh, basically becomes uh, a probability of error happening sooner or later. So we want to avoid those obstacles down the line. I wouldn't consider it uh, conservative. I would just consider it uh, uh, um, consistent to ensure that we can, we can meet the goals that we set out to meet. Aurora, talk us through how you decided what a sustainable dividend payout level is and when you pay out special dividends versus buying back your stock. The quarterly dividend is the, the core, the basis, the, the final uh, part of, of, of our return of capital policy. We have set that dividend at a rate where we know that we can continue to pay that uh, irrespective of changes in copper price. Uh, there will always be changes from quarter to quarter, from period to period. We saw that for some of the months of 2022. And we were fine because we knew that we had set that dividend at a, at a, at a level where it would be safe irrespective of those uh, volatile conditions. So that is a fundamental aspect. 
When we first set out the quarterly dividend, it was set at two cents Canadian per share per quarter. We increased that to three cents uh, per quarter, which is where we are at now. And we feel comfortable that that is a level at which that dividend will continue to be safe, predictable, et cetera. Uh, then on top of that, there are two avenues for us to return cash, the share buybacks and the performance dividend. Share buybacks, um, the key message there is we use them opportunistically. So to the extent that we know that our share price is undervalued, we uh, we like to do share buybacks, and we've been doing that extensively for the last two years. The, the third part will be uh, the performance dividends. The beauty about the performance dividend is the flexibility that's associated with it. It is really a, a prime mechanism, in my view, to return excess cash to shareholders uh, under the right macro uh, conditions. Your dividend yield of nearly 8% is far above the larger copper mining universe, even though you have more cash than debt and very low leverage ratios. Do you have an opinion on what it'll take for the market to start bidding your yield down in line with everyone else? Is it simply building credibility as a stable and growing dividend payer? It is. I think that credibility uh, is a fundamental part of the answer that you're looking for there. Uh, to the extent that the market recognizes that we have a consistent operation, that we are uh, saying and, and doing, we're doing what we said we we're going to be doing, uh, that's a fundamental aspect of the story. We now have three years of having beat our production guidance. Our operations are stable. Uh, 2022 showed us that Amerigo can still generate substantial amounts of cash flow, irrespective of uh, uh, periods of falling copper prices. So I think that all of those uh, messages and accumulated history for the last three years uh, are key to the uh, repositioning of the share price of Amerigo and the yield correction you were speaking about. Your debt is down a lot since 2015, as you mentioned, and it's at a very low level currently. Is there a certain target? Do you want it to go lower? Are you happy with where it is? What are your thoughts on the debt level overall? We refinanced our debt uh, two years ago. We have it under a term uh, loan agreement. We're repaying $7 million of debt uh, per year, and we're going to be out of debt in three years. Those were some great insights. Thanks, Aura.